before the season begins, we'll know what the fate of Deshaun Watson is. And as we now know, and as we've known for a week, Judge Sue L. Robinson has the paperwork in her possession. She's in a position to make a decision. And I continue to believe it's coming next week with the possibility she's clued into the bad news dump mentality of the NFL that'll come on Friday afternoon. And yesterday's big news came from Charles Robinson, who said that the decision has already been made by the NFL Players Association and Deshaun Watson to file a lawsuit if the end result of the NFL's internal disciplinary process is that Watson is suspended for the full season. Now, now look, that's a big if. Because right now there aren't a lot of people who think the NFL will get what it wants, a full season suspension. Remember this, 24 accusers in civil court, 10 accusers in criminal court, In the court of Roger Goodell, as presided over temporarily by Judge Sue L. Robinson, there were four. That's it. Those are the only cases that the NFL brought to Judge Robinson, not 24. At 24, it feels like an avalanche. At four, it feels manageable. It doesn't mean he's going to win. doesn't mean he's going to get no discipline at all. But remember, it's just four. So where does that leave us? I think a full season suspension based upon her decision could be a lot to expect. Now, if she imposes any discipline, the league can appeal to Roger Goodell and Roger Goodell can decide to say, well, we we part ways here, Judge Robinson. We think that he should be suspended for a full year. But there really isn't a firm belief, a widespread belief right now that it will be a full year. Now, if it is, hey, there'll be litigation. That's fine. He's got the right to go to court. He's got the right to try. As we explained yesterday on PFT, the Tom Brady case and the Ezekiel Elliott case point to a conclusion that as long as the NFL files a lawsuit first for what they call a declaratory judgment in federal court in New York City, trying to defend the end result of their in-house decision-making, the NFL is likely to prevail because the federal appeals court that has jurisdiction over any cases filed in the Southern District of New York, in other words, Manhattan, that appeals court already has created precedent that is very helpful to the NFL. And as I've said before, but it bears repeating, judges love it when private parties have their own procedures for resolving their differences. Then they don't have to get involved. Judges don't get paid by the case. They don't get paid by the hour. They get paid by the year. Fewer cases means easier workload, means you can focus on other things and not disputes that the parties have already come up with a procedure and a mechanism for resolving. So uphill climb in court, and I don't think we get to that point. Now, we posted earlier today on PFT that based upon the reaction of someone who has seen the submissions of the parties, two to eight games is the expected range. We'll see. We'll see. Everybody's all over the place on this. This is what we've heard. I'd be stunned if it's a full year at this point. And remember, one of the best arguments for Deshaun Watson, comparing his punishment to any punishment imposed on owners who may have or did violate the personal conduct policy. And I keep coming back to the fact that mums the word from the league and the team on whether or not the Texans are being investigated, whether or not the director of security is being investigated for a personal conduct policy violation based upon the fact that he became aware of an issue with Sean Watson and as Watson has testified, the guy gave him an NDA to use moving forward. The NFL isn't even going to investigate that for a potential personal conduct policy violation. Maybe that helps Deshaun Watson. Maybe there should be a supplemental brief or a letter sent to Judge Robinson saying, hey, need to ask the NFL whether or not they're going to take a closer look at the Texans. And if they're not, it's another point in Watson's favor. So we'll continue to watch it. We'll continue to monitor it. It continues to be, obviously, an issue of great concern for a variety of reasons. And with football season approaching, the Browns, their fans, they want to know who the quarterback is going to be. And if Watson would be unavailable for an extended period of time, what will they do? There's been some reporting that maybe they would sign a backup to Jacoby Brissett. I think some of that may be posturing so they don't have to overpay for a Jimmy Garoppolo. Wouldn't it be something if the Browns end up giving up a lot more 
than the Panthers gave up to get Baker Mayfield so that the Browns can get Jimmy Garoppolo, but the Browns would be more desperate than the Panthers were if it came down to Watson out for the year. Again, I don't think it's going to happen, but until it happens, we don't know. And that's why the Browns need to know. The sooner they get a decision on this, the better. And remember, Judge Robinson's decision isn't the end. The appeal possibility lingers with also the potential that we won't have a final answer until some point mid to late August by the time the appeal is heard and resolved by the commission. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.